uh, any immunosuppressing drug like corticosteroid, cytotoxic drug, or any syndrome that cause immunodeficiency is known as secondary immunodeficiency. And today we will go through the primary immune deficiency. And these are some inherited rare causes. What are they? They are some heterogeneous group of disorder where the are uh, components of immune system will be absent or uh, they function uh, poor. And what are the components of immune system? They are macrophage, neutrophil, complement, lymphocyte, and natural NK cell. So uh, before getting into the details, let's take a look over the immune system, our body's normal immune system. Here, the, this figure is showing that our body has two kinds of immune system that is innate and adaptive. Now, uh, let's look at first on innate immune system and um, we can imagine this as a battlefield where the soldiers are macrophage, neutrophil, and complement system, okay? As soon as our body is exposed to any pathogen, any pathogen that is our enemy, this innate immune system starts to work within a minute. Okay. And what happens then? This macrophage, these macrophages first recognize the enemy, the invading pathogen by their receptor. And after being activated, they engulf the pathogen the process is known as phagocytosis. At the same time, they initiate an acute inflammatory response by producing some inflammatory cytokine, chemokine, prostaglandin, leukotriene, and complement. And by chemokine, they stimulate the release of neutrophil. And this neutrophil is also a strong phagocytic cell, and they also phagocytes the pathogen. And this complement, what they do? They lyse the pathogen directly or opsonize the pathogen to assist phagocytosis. All right? And it is the adaptive immune response. Here, um, the main soldier or player are T cell, B cell, and natural killer cell. And whenever an antigen, antigen presenting cell, antigen presenting cell uh, present antigen to T cell receptor, then activation and proliferation of helper T cell happens, okay? And at the time, helper T cell develop or differentiate into three types of cell. That is helper one T cell, helper two type T cell, and helper 17, all right? And this helper one T cell, this activate cytotoxic T cell, uh, macrophage, as well as B cell to kill the pathogen. And what happens to B cell after activation? It differentiates into plasma cell and plasma cell release antibody and kill the pathogen, okay? And helper two cell, they usually favors the humoral response with IgM, IgA, and IgE by producing 
anti-inflammatory cytokine. And another one, helper 17. Helper 17 cell, it, it is uh, um, an important player in tissue inflammation or epithelial defense against fungal and bacterial infection. Okay, so here um, you can consider this thing as a game. Here the players are T cell, T cell means cytotoxic T cell, regulatory T cell, B cell, natural killer cell. Okay, and helper T cell is their coach. They encourage them to act to um, defense against their opponent team. Right. And uh, lastly, the regulatory T cell shutting down the immune response and preventing autoimmunity. Okay. This is our body's immune system. Uh, do you have any problem to get this? If so, then you can let me know. No, ma'am. Thank you. Now, our immune systems are development and maturation. When it is developed and how it is matured. From our early fetal life, both the adaptive, uh, adaptive and innate immune system develops. But why fetal uh, fetus are immunosuppressed? Because their uh, T regulatory cells are predominant. Okay, so they are immunosuppressed and um, they can recognize the foreign antigen, can mount the uh, adaptive response, but they are incapable to clear the infection. And as a result, what happened? They can got congenital infection like CMV rubella very easily, okay. And, um, but fortunately, they can be protected by uh, placenta barrier and uh, some fetomaternal transfer of IgG that starts from 17 weeks of gestation. And by 30 weeks, uh, the, uh, it uh, reaches to the half of maternal level and it, it reaches uh, to full maternal level to term. So preterm infants, so premature infants are highly susceptible to infection. We frequently counsel the parents of preterm infant that their babies are prone to, in, uh, prone to get infected. Hmm. This is the re reason why they, uh, they, they don't get the full level of IgG from their mother. And what happens after birth? After birth, maternal IgG gradually declines, almost disappear by six months, and um, infant's own IgG start to produce increases. But um, in between three to six months of their age, there will be very low level of IgG, that is called nadir stage. Okay. Ma'am? Yes? Yes, doctor? Uh, Ma'am, that na nadir level is about maternal uh, that uh, nadir level at the age of three to six months, that is of maternal antibody? At that time, maternal antibody is um, lowering down, it starts to lowering down. Okay. Okay. So they reach at the lowest level at three to six months. Mainly it begins at three to six months. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's start our main topic, primary immune deficiency. Now, when to suspect? when we will uh, suspect a child that he is suffering from primary immune deficiency. There are some warning signs that are 
four or more new ear infection within 12 months. Parents will give you a history that my child is suffering from a frequent ear infection, that is four or more, more within a year. Or they, uh, may get, uh, they may have serious sinus infection or pneumonia, okay, in one year. Or they have atypical infection and Yes, they, uh, they have poor growth and recurrent or prolonged diarrhea. They also may give history of deep skin or organ abscess and molluscum. They got uh, warts or molluscum, mucocutaneous candidiasis persistently after one year of age. And they uh, frequently infected with, with opportunistic pathogen and they um, got complication after having live vaccines. And uh, for their management, they always need to be treated with IV antibiotics. Okay. And uh, two or more invasive infection. And uh, they also may ha uh, have unexplained autoimmune disease and uh, very importantly, they also give some family history suggestive of PID. Then how can we approach? We need to take detailed history from the parents as well as the family history because uh, most of the disorders have genetic basis and we need to examine the baby thoroughly from um, their growth, their nutritional status, their skin, nail, teeth, hair, and um, ENT respiratory system, lymphoid tissue, if they have any organomegaly or not, if they have any dysmorphic phase or not. And lastly, the neurodevelopment will be assessed. Um, after clinical examination, you need, we need to do some lab investigation like CBC, serum immunoglobulin, lymphocyte subsets, and vaccine antibody response. This um, investigation result can rule out uh, the diagnosis, but if after uh, getting the uh, result, um, that uh, if the results are against our diagnosis, but we, we do have very strong suspicion that, uh, that it is a case of TID, then we need to refer the baby to immunologist, pediatric immunologist for assessment. Uh, <clears throat> now we can classify the PID into three groups. One, abnormalities of antibody-mediated immunity, disorder of cell-mediated Im immunity, and innate immunity defect. Disorder of antibody-mediated immunity includes X-linked A gamma globulinemia or hypogamma globulinemia or Bruton's disease, CVID or combined variable immunodeficiency, IgA deficiency, and ataxia telangiectasia. Next one is combined immunodeficiency. It is classified into severe combined immunodeficiency or SCID. Diger syndrome, Wiscott Eldrick syndrome, hyper IgM syndrome, and lymphoproliferative syndrome. And next one is innate immune defects. Here it is classified into complement deficiency, hyper IgE syndrome or job syndrome, and another one is Mendelian susceptibility to my mycobacterial disease. Now, antibody-mediated disorder. Okay. Uh, this disorder, the child who is suffering from antibody-mediated disorder have increased susceptibility to bacterial infection like streptococcus pneumoniae, hemophilus influenza, pseudomonas aeruginosa, mycoplasma. And they also have prone to infected with enterovirus and giardia lamblia. Now, first one is 
एक स्लेम एगामा ग्लोबुलिनिमिया और हाइपोगामा ग्लोबुलिनिमिया और ब्रूटन डिजीज The pathogenesis is that the gene, the BTK, Bruton's tyrosinkinase, one gene defect. Here, abnormalities in lymphocyte differentiation. Okay. Then what will happen? There is absence of B cell or plasma cell. As a result, absent or very low level of gamma globulin. and this is a x linked disorder and here boys are typically affected and presentation age of presentation is 6 months to 5 years and the child present with recurrent sinopulmonary infection and on examination they have um, little lymphoid tissue tonsils are absent or small in lab finding we get low level of igg igm and iga b cell is absent as well absent isohemagglutinin and uh, we can also do btk gene analysis uh, regarding treatment these uh, these conditions uh, all conditions need aggressive treatment for infection and also we can give them ivig so we can um uh, remember this like with this b okay b for boy brutons b b for boys boys are affected b b cell defect for b it is uh, b cell area is under developed and uh, here hypogamma globulinemia that means hypo means low gamma globin gamma globulin uh, here we get low gamma globulin 